stop this right now. I was getting ready for you. <laughs> I am so excited about today's video because I just got off the call with the woman, the myth, the legend herself, Alison Bornstein, for my follow-up appointment. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the love and your guys' comments on the first video. In case you missed it, we recently did a video where I booked a one-hour appointment with the celeb fashion stylist, Alison Bornstein, and we learned so much. There was so much crammed into that hour, and I was basically looking for advice on how to style my everyday clothing and get some advice on how how to put outfits together and how we can style up the proper items for my body's proportions and so many different things and for the last week it's been a week since my first appointment and I have been living in loafers her comments on my shoe to jeans and pant length ratio has just changed my life and I have been having such a great time and I wanted to book a follow-up appointment to kind of go over some of the things that were missing in my wardrobe cover some of the items that I never wear and wanted advice on styling because we got so careful away with like the loafers and the pants and that first one I was like listen I need a part two we need to go over the things that I missed and I had so many more questions for her so she was so lovely I took notes and I wanted to give you the part two everything I learned from my second session with Alison Bornstein and I'm obviously gonna link her page in the description box down below in case you have not been blessed by her glory online yet <laughs> so from the first video we confirmed that denim is a place where I struggle I've got a really straight body type I don't have hips and I have big chunky muscular legs and I really struggle with denim and pants in general and how to style those with specific shoes. So from the last video, we determined that the long straight leg, like much longer than I thought, was the best kind of style for me and pairing those with either loafers or sandals or my little Chanel pumps, a cutie little heel to pair with those. And the kind of quotable takeaway that I got from Allison regarding that was that you want the top of your foot showing, but you don't want your ankle showing. And that was so helpful because I have been really messing around with the proportions of my jeans for so long and that was really helpful and that's kind of like on my shopping list. I do have that one pair of denim form jeans that don't exist anymore and so that style, that long straight pant that's long enough to cover my ankle but still lets the top of my foot show, we determined that that was the best kind of denim style for me. So that is added to my shopping list, my to buy pieces. So then today what I wanted to confirm was, okay, so she debunked my my myth with the lengths of the jeans, but then I do have my pairs of those more cropped jeans and is there a way that I can make those work in my wardrobe? So I put both of them on for her. I have these pair of uh, frame, these are the Lasilvi Slender Straight and I've had these for a long time. This is what I previously wore with my little Chanel pumps and things and I didn't really know how to make them work for me and basically what I had been doing because these are actually really stretchy was I kind of crank them up to give them that more cropped feel but she was like can you just pull those down can you pull these jeans down and I was like yeah and it just completely changed the overall look. So basically this, as well as another pair of these crop pants that I have, it's just not the style for me. So these ones I actually can pull down and make work, but she reinforced again the fact that that longer pair of denim is, is how to make my legs look longer and still achieve the style that I'm wanting to go for. So the crop jean was really not, not the jean for me and that was kind of a, a good solidifier and honestly really helpful because it just it just makes getting dressed easier when I can narrow it down. And then we went back to the H&M jeans, which we love. You guys know how much I love my 90s jeans. And we styled these up a bunch throughout this call again, but basically like the denim form jeans that I have on the shopping list and the kind of dream wardrobe would be to get a similar style to this, that loose, comfortable, vintage feeling jean, but not as baggy. And that will help me when I'm like posing in photos and maybe looking a little bit less baggy and unkempt. If I'm looking for that cleaner, fresher, chic look, finding a pair that fits similarly to this, but that is a little bit more slim, a little bit more straight and less baggy, that would be ideal. So um, Allison's gonna very kindly go on the hunt for me and I'll have to update you later on that. But adding to my to buy list is uh, more of that concept of jeans. So that was something that we covered again, just following up from that first video, which was really, really helpful. So let us say it together again. You want to show the top of your foot, but cover the ankle. Allison, we love you forever for that. So helpful. So then we got into my gray suit, which is a piece that I've been referencing a lot this everyday May. This was kind of in my regretted uh, worst purchases because I spent a pretty penny on these and I really thought it was gonna be the suit of my dreams. I thought I was gonna wear this so much. It kind of makes me feel really frumpy and like too oversized when I wear it together. And as far as Allison's like closet editing system, this suit was in my never wear pile and my how to wear pile. I never knew how to style this and we missed this 
this in the first video, so I was like, Allison, I beg of you, please help me style this beautiful Magda Boutram suit. So she confirmed that it's just not the vibe. It doesn't work together for me. So with the gray blazer, because this is a really nice, light, thin, crepey material, it's also a lighter, like cool tone gray. She really loved the idea of just styling this with all white. So we paired a white t-shirt with the white H&M baggy jeans, which I loved. And then for me, in my usual go-to styling, I would automatically try to pair that with a matching like lighter belt, like maybe my Banana Republic braided belt and then a lighter shoe, which is where I struggle. And she was like, no, 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 you can do the all white. You can wear this lighter blazer and also pair it with the black accessories, which again, is just something I would have never done myself. So it was so nice to have that eye-opening moment. So I put my same black belt on with the black Chanel heels. And then we also did the loafers. I think the heels was the better option if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so that was a way that I would have never styled it. And then another thing she liked to add was an undershirt of some kind. So she she wanted to add a little pop of color to kind of mix it up. And that's where we added the blue shirt, adding in a little layer of that lighter blue or just a fun like light wash of a pop of color, just kind of broke up the outfit and gave it a really cool casual chic vibe, which was really nice. And she actually said she would have preferred to have some kind of denim shirt. And the only denim shirt I have is this one from H&M, which is actually more of like a jacket. She said it wasn't light enough. It wasn't shirty enough. It was just more like a denim jacket. So uh, that's kind of also on my shopping list if I want to add it is that kind of lighter like chambray denim shirt and that can add a lot of like nice texture to the outfits like this but keeping to those lighter colors was really nice and then when we were doing that styling with the blazer I was like okay what bag would you pair with this my automatic instinct would be to go for the white bag and then she actually suggested pulling out the Dior Bobby bag which if you guys just watched my best and worst I was hemming and hawing I was like I don't know how to style this bag I never wear it I never reach for it and she was like oh my god yes the blue in this bag is like perfect for styling up with outfits like these and we actually ended up styling this bag with so many outfits in this call which was so helpful and again just kind of got confirmation that this was in fact a good purchase and I got uh, some new inspiration on how to make it work in my closet which was exciting so we did end up styling it a few different ways which was very very helpful and very nice and then moving on to the pants where I realized I struggled with this is that the pants have quite a billowy like like Aladdin pant feeling. And it's because I think it has the three pleats instead of one that go down the center of the leg, which just gives it that extra billowy. It kind of almost looks like a skirt when I'm wearing it. And so I've struggled to pair things on the top without making it look like too oversized and too frumpy. So again, the blazers didn't really work. Having some oversized blazers weren't really the vibe. So we actually ended up going all black with this. She paired this with my black a Goldie Rian bodysuit and then my black accessories. So we did the black belt and then we tried this actually it looked really good with my black tiki's flip-flops which i wasn't expecting i would have never assumed to wear flip-flops with like these very dressed up wool pants and then it also actually ended up looking really good with the loafers which i wasn't expecting the the long drape of the leg ended up looking really cool not everybody might approve of pants dragging on the ground but i personally don't mind i do love an oversized fit so that actually worked and then we also paired it with sneakers and it looked great and the one takeaway from that to not overboard or overload the upper half was to just do that drape with a crew neck and that has been a huge thing that I've been noticing recently on Instagram it's not something I ever really picked up on but how often you kind of see that and how easy it is to add an extra layer without making anything look too bulky so we just took my black crew neck and draped it over my shoulders and that made the top feel less naked with the bodysuit while also adding an extra layer in case things got chilly so for the fall and winter dressing having that black crew neck to go with these pants just makes it look a little bit more chic and a little bit more chilled out versus how i would typically style it which would be putting on my bodysuit and then throwing like my black cardigan over it which can make it feel a little bit old and just not as chic so having that like sleek little black crew neck draped over the shoulders or worn on top of it it's the perfect way to style these pants for a more casual day throw it with my sneakers or I can wear heels and loafers and dress it up a little bit same with the Dior bobby bag like it was just a great way to use my basics to style up these pants so I was very happy to have some wiggle room in the styling world for these pants and also the blazer so the gray suit has a thumbs up and a stamp of approval I'm thrilled 
So another piece that I had recently been struggling with, if you guys saw that video, I mentioned that I'd been struggling with my Acne Studios blazer, my black blazer, and trying to find something to replace it that gives me the same feeling. Like I wanted that effortless, easy, black blazer that I can throw on with everything. And I had previously mentioned that this blazer in particular is the one that I've had for years and years and years. And I always thought it was my perfect blazer. And then recently I've been feeling like it actually kind of gives me a much more boxy feel. And it's funny because when I started following Allison recently and watching all her videos, taking in all her content, she actually has this blazer and styles it with absolutely everything. And so that was one piece that I forgot to mention the first time around. So this time I said, Allison, I need your honest opinions about this this acne blazer. I had put it in my to sell pile. I struggle with styling it and I kind of showed her what I meant where I find for, for my body shape, a boxier body shape, that having a blazer with the middle seam on the back just flows a lot more nicely on my body and has a bit more of a flattering shape. Whereas the side slits that it has can just stay flared out and sometimes make me look too boxy. And she was like, I don't necessarily agree. She loves how it looks, but she understands that I feel that way. So that's actually did end up getting a confirmation that this blazer is going to go and I'm gonna be on the hunt for something more clean because even the one that I had bought before has exposed buttons. Like I just, I, I'm still looking for the perfect casual basic black wall blazer. We still don't have the right one. So this one is going to be in my in my to-go pile. I'm gonna jump back to that little cashmere crew neck comment because this is the one that I have. This is my black Everlane cashmere crew. I got this in a size large to have a little bit of a more flowy feel. And this is the one that we were wrapping around the shoulders. And one item that I had mentioned the last time was my struggle in finding a proper crisp white sweater because all the ones that I have bought previously or been able to find previously are more ivory or more cream. It's like vanilla, ecru, ivory. Like there was never a true crisp white one. Uh, I found one. This is from a brand called White and Warren. Literally got delivered today. Uh, the timing could not be better, bless. So I showed Alice and I was like, do you approve? Is this the one? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. And I can't express to you guys, paired with the white bodysuit or a white t-shirt, white tank, whatever, it did make such a difference having like an actual true white for the sweater. So threw this over the shoulders, paired it a bunch of ways. And one way that she styled this cashmere crew, which blew my mind, was over top of the gray blazer. I would have never thought to put a sweater over the blazer, but it added such an effortless, cool little touch to the outfit, made it feel a lot more breezy and beachy and it was so cute, it was so cute. I would have never thrown that over top of the gray blazer, but there's another way that you can layer up your pieces, especially in these like in-between seasons, like spring and fall. It's a way to add some extra warmth but add a chic little piece of texture to the outfit too, which I thought was so cool. So we got the approval, we got a white sweater and what a fun new way to style it as well. So I know that we already touched on a few of the pieces, but basically I wanted to leave this call with a list of things that I needed to buy. And it was actually nice, like in the moments of styling the outfits from this call and also our last appointment, it was nice to have a clear visual of certain basic pieces that I was missing in my wardrobe. But I'm happy to say that there weren't too many. My shopping list isn't too extensive, but Definitely that nude heel is something that I definitely need to consider as well as getting a nicer, more elevated, lighter like flip-flop. I love my black flip-flops from Tiki's, but in a few of the outfits that we were styling, it would be really nice to have like either a white pair of the same flip-flops or some kind of like nicer, sleeker, lighter suede to go with my suede pouch bag. And that will just add a lot of versatility in the same like basic pieces that I style up together. And especially when I'm throwing in blazers and styling up trousers, like having those more elevated sandals and flip-flops will really help with my wardrobe. So I'm gonna be on the hunt for white flip-flops or a lighter suede flip-flop, especially going into summer styling. I think that's something that's gonna really help. And then with my Rian bodysuit, with certain things like maxi skirts, the dress pants, it can feel a little bit too casual with the like thick rib. And so something that's on my to buy list is having a more dressed up version of the bodysuit. I still want that like sleek, comfy, casual, high halter, high neck of the bodysuit, but maybe something that's not in that thick rib material, like maybe a nicer crepe or just like a thinner sheer cotton, like something that feels a little bit more dressy. And I think that that will pair well as well with things like my blazers and the suiting pieces, the tailoring. I think it'll give it the elevated feel that I'm looking for and be able to dress up my outfits without removing the comfort from it. 
And then to reiterate, obviously I'm gonna be on the hunt for denim, finding those perfect length. The 28 length was the length that we determined was the one for me. And then adding in a little lighter denim chambray style shirt so I can rock that double denim life without necessarily wearing a denim jacket, which I love, love to represent the Canadian tuxedo. I'm so excited to incorporate more of that in my wardrobe. So that is my to purchase list. Those are a few little basic pieces that I'm gonna be on the hunt for. And I'm so excited to see what that does in my styling going forward so I wanted to get this up because I did just have the appointment with her and she's amazing and I wanted to reiterate everything I learned to you right as it happened but there's definitely going to be a follow-up in the next couple weeks once I'm able to source and find those items and then I think it'll be cool to follow up and do some styling together so I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments I know a few of you asked for like specific things I think it'd be so fun to continue this little series and get some professional help some Allison insight on like specific events and packing for trips and maybe like summer capsule styles. She dresses me for a week. Like I think that'd be so fun. So if there's any specific, if there's any specific like scenarios that you'd like these videos to be styled and centered around, I'm so happy to do that. And this is super fun and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it too. So I hope that this video was helpful. Thank you always to Allison for being a glorious human being filled with fashion knowledge. I'm learning so much in this process and I hope that you guys are too. So I hope we can have a little chat in the comments down below. Happy day to you. I'm going to see you guys all very soon for a new Everyday May video. Thanks for watching. Bye!